I'm George Vesey, a sports columnist of the New York Times. I've been covering soccer for about 30 years. My first World Cup goes back to 1982. And in all that time, I don't know that I've ever had a chance to be inside with a team to get a sense of how they build up for an important international event. So inquiries were made and I've been privileged to spend a couple of days here with the U.S. national team and Bob Bradley. It's been an interesting ride being around the, the team in two places. I went out to Carson, California, spent a morning in the office with Bob and two of his assistants, listened in on a meeting where they prepared the, uh, to call up the team. They went over some of the players, who was healthy, who wasn't, who was playing, who wasn't. And then I joined the team in Cary, North Carolina, beautiful Cary, North Carolina, and in springtime. And I got a chance to be around the team, even actually going to a few meals, riding on the team bus, which was, I have to say, rather cool when these guys come together. Some of them haven't seen each other you know, in months. And the first thing they do is a big hug, a handshakes, all the new, the new varieties of handshakes, catching up on things as they sit and talk. But they clearly are friendly. They clearly like each other, all of the ones who've been around. And I also noticed that some of the older players on the team, or let's say more established players, made a point of sitting with the new guys. As far as the coaches go, it was a treat to sit at the same table with them and hear their shop talk. Every reporter likes shop talk, which is different from gossip. I mean, it's not like they're bad-mouthing players or other coaches or anything like that. It's just like what they do. And to sit at a table and hear what they're looking for on the field, stuff that they heard from overseas, what players are in shape. I like to know what other people know as part of their job, and it was a, a treat to hear it. Being in L.A. With, with the coaches, without the players around was interesting because I saw how well they tracked them. They have three or four televisions and computers on in the office. They were, they were watching the uh, Arsenal Barcelona replay up on the tube, and meanwhile they had other things coming through on their, on their computers. So they all had a big blackboard with all the names of, of the possible players in the pool who might be called in. They had so much information. They had diskettes all over their desks, you know, just swamped with diskettes of games that had been played in probably a dozen different countries of their far-flung players. So I realized how much this world is electronic. I see with Bob, I think he's working very hard to be strict and straight, but I've also caught him over the years a few times smiling but I do see him put up barriers out in public and particularly when he's around the press because we are a pretty annoying lot I mean myself included so I understand why coaches do put up the wall and, and players and athletes in general but in Bob's case I, I guess I'm not surprised to find out that he's a pretty complicated and interesting guy you know it's such an American team that's one of the things I'll take away with me uh, that, and I'll be happy to write this also, is that it really is an American team in the America that I believe in, even including the players who, a couple of guys who I don't think speak English all that well, but are totally as entitled to their American passport as I am, and how they interact, how they're brought into it, that this is the country that I know that I belong to, and that the America is constantly changing, so these guys come in, but they bring their own personality to it, and the same thing is true for the established players who are so different. I mean, Landon Donovan uh, speaking Spanish, and uh, well, Steve Chirondolo isn't here, but the way he speaks German, and some of the other guys with their contacts outside the country, it's clear that they bring a lot to it. And yet when they come together, it's a mix. It's a potpourri, and it's very American.